few months ago, when the Insomnia panel chose this talk, I was very excited. And then they told me there were no PowerPoint slides, no graphs, no numbers to show. And I was thrilled because this gave me the chance to tell you the story of how I became a solar energy scientist and engineer. A story about the joy of discovery and innovation along many of my students while keeping up with an industry that is changing at a lightning fast pace. You see, Solar panels have evolved so quickly that they are now, without a doubt, instrumental in tackling climate change. Wouldn't it be nice to know a little bit more about the technology and how it came to be? Well, let's start the journey. Come along with me to 2007. <laughs> Don't be afraid, the internet was there, mobile phones were there, and even Facebook was already a thing, so you'll be fine. This was the time when I joined UNSW, arguably the best place in the world to do solar cell research. Also the only place in the world where you can get an engineering degree in photovoltaics, if you want to know the fancy word for it. Prior to this, I had been in the US where I got my PhD in electrical engineering, later becoming an essential element of a successful startup company. Our company was developing a new type of transistor for telecommunications. But to tell you the truth, it didn't really feel like I was making much of a difference in the world. In 2007, solar panels were quite reliable already. And if you had $50,000 stashed under your mattress, you could have installed a state-of-the-art solar power system on your home. Now, keep in mind, this was 10% of the cost of a medium-sized home in Australia at the time. Understandably, solar energy seemed far from viable. Right around that point in time, solar panels had seen an increase in price due to a shortage of silicon. Mind you, silicon, the main element used in commercial solar cells, is the second most abundant element of the Earth's crust. But the volume needed to make solar cells is thousands of times more than required for computer chips. So the semiconductor industry just couldn't keep up with the demand. Consequently, my research at UNSW focused on using the least amount of silicon to make the best possible solar cells. For a couple of years, I dedicated myself to engineering tiny, tiny particles of silicon to make what we call quantum dots. This was very intriguing because changing the size of the quantum dot, we could make silicon behave like a completely different element altogether. I was very excited when I managed to make some solar cells that actually behaved different from silicon, even though they were 99.9% .9 silicon and oxygen. And even though their efficiency was far from record-breaking, some of the things we learned turned out to be quite useful. Meanwhile, the solar industry kept growing. Fuel by the result of our research, smart policy that ensured renewable energy was paid at a premium price, and constant improvements in the manufacturing process. Fun fact, about 90% of the solar panels produced in the world today use technology developed at UNSW. Fast forward to 2020, and you would have paid then only 5% of what you would have paid in 2007 for the same solar power system. This is about 20 times less. You also need less material, less space, less cables, and less hassle to install it, with an added bonus of 25 years warranty on the performance of your panels. And all this change in a mere 13 years. So we solved it. Solar panels provide a cheap, clean, and reliable energy that is now undeniably here to stay. So what is next? I think that what is next for solar energy is very exciting, because it is no longer just a lab curiosity. Solar energy is at everyone's reach. Everyone watching this could come up with a great new application. No matter if you're an artist, a scientist, a lawyer, a tradie, a doctor, a student, a teacher, an engineer, the possibilities are endless. I'll tell you about three of the projects I'm now working on just to give you a taste of what there is to come. Research can be all about exploring unconventional ideas that one day may pay off. But we also need to face reality. And the reality is that to tackle climate change, the time is up. So we need to focus on technologies that are feasible in the very near future. This is precisely why quite a bit of my energy is going into making hydrogen production using solar energy. We can make hydrogen by splitting water in something called an electrolyzer by applying a current through the water. Incidentally, you can find many YouTube videos that show you how to do this in your garage. But if we're going to make this happen at the scale we need it to power vehicles and industry, we require something quite a bit more efficient than what you find in YouTube. You see, when you apply a voltage to a couple of metal conductors in a water container, 
most of the energy is lost, and you get very little bang for your buck, a few popping bubbles of hydrogen. Our goal at UNSW is to make the most efficient large-scale solar-to-hydrogen converter in the world. We have combined the experience and know-how of many of my colleagues to make a super-efficient electrolyzer coupled with state-of-the-art electronics that I've designed. We're also working with Raygen, an Australian industrial partner, to use their patented solar concentrators. <laughs> but beware, these solar collectors get hot, and heat is bad for solar performance. But it is great to improve the efficiency of the electrolyzer. So what if we take some of this heat to heat up the water and consequently keep the solar panels a bit cooler? Well, that's what we're doing. We've proven the idea in the lab and are about to get it out in the field. Although research has kept me happy and occupied in the lab, over the past four years, my main focus has changed into education because I'm convinced that those with fresh and malleable minds are at the forefront of this revolution. Imagining the unthinkable. I now spend most of my time teaching, mentoring, and inventing along undergraduate students of all disciplines, shaping a cleaner, smarter, and more sustainable future. Let's start with the big polluters, cars. An easy solution, just make them electric. But when people think of electric cars, the first thing that comes to mind is, will the battery last long enough for my trip? So what if you could have an electric car that never needs to be charged? This is precisely what a very creative group of students are trying to get to, a solar power car that you would actually want to drive. But let's not stop there. The car could even power your house, storing energy during the day and giving it back at night. Dozens of undergraduate students have put years of effort building a team called SunSwift that is making this dream come true. And we are getting there. The students' ideas, creativity, and time has resulted in a car that I think even Tesla could be a little bit jealous of. Another group of students that I'm also mentoring has decided to look inwards. Once we realize that there is plenty of solar energy, even under your skin. The mini solar team at UNSW is making tiny solar cells, batteries, and electronics that one day could work as a medical implant. One that will last as long as you will because it gets its power from the sun. It will sit happily under your skin, gathering data of your health stats, maybe aging along with you and checking you're still on your feet. And if you're not, calling for help to get you up. Or hopefully, maybe just reminding you to get out there and get a little bit of sunshine. Solar-generated electricity has always been an alternative to fossil fuels, but up until just a few years ago, it was still too expensive. I'm thrilled to see we've now crossed that threshold. Nothing is cheaper than solar to make electricity. But as advanced and mature as solar panels may be, I still think of them as a vaccine. They have all the potential to solve a huge problem, but the key is on how we use them, where we use them, and what we use them for. We are barely scratching the surface of new applications for solar energy, and I hope I've given you a glimpse of what there is to come. Wouldn't it be cool if you could be riding in a solar-powered car that never needs to be charged, listening to the news of amazing climate mitigation efforts around the world powered by solar-generated hydrogen, and knowing with certainty that your health is in perfect condition thanks to a little solar implant that keeps track of your well-being. And of course, this is just the beginning of your story. <laughs>